What tone does O. Henry create through the language that his narrator uses to describe incidents and other characters? How does this tone contribute to the reader's understanding of the narrator's perspective of society? In this lesson, you will learn how to analyze the impact of specific word choices on meaning and tone by examining what they reveal about the narrator's perspective. Now, we've been reading a short story, Holding Up a Train, which is written by William Sidney Porter, whose pen name was O. Henry in 1904. Now, let's review the meaning of the word tone. I know that tone refers to the attitude that the writer conveys through the words that he or she chooses and how those words are presented in the text. So, for example, writers could convey a serious, comic, nonchalant, or passionate attitude toward the subject. This is very similar to the meaning of the word tone when we use it in everyday language. So, for example, if a daughter speaks to her mother in a sarcastic way, you might hear her mother say, don't speak in that kind of tone to me, missy. The tone, in other words, is a message that we get from the way that someone speaks or writes something. So when a writer conveys his or her attitude, it tends to create an effect on the reader by giving us a feeling, such as making us laugh, making us think a little harder, or making us feel positive or negative about something. So the emotion that we feel as readers from an author's choice of words is called the mood. Let's also review the meaning of the word satire, as this will become important in this lesson. Satire refers to the use of humor, irony, exaggeration, or ridicule to expose and criticize people's stupidity or vices. Some of the type of words that an author may use to create satire could be described as irony, or the use of words that mean the opposite of what you really think, sarcasm, wit, cynicism, or sardonic or grimly mocking humor, or even dark humor, which is humor that jokes about things that really aren't funny. These are some good words for us to have in our arsenal to describe how O. Henry's narrator uses language in holding up a train. So today we're going to be exploring that language through three steps to guide us. One, scan and annotate the text, asking yourself what words or phrases evoke an image, emotion, or opinion. Number two, ask yourself what tone do these word choices create? Number three, ask yourself what does the tone reveal about the narrator's perspective? So if we go back to our original question, we can infer that we'll be looking back through the entirety of the text. So Henry's narrator uses language to describe incidents and other characters all throughout the text. Now as I'm scanning the text, I'm searching for words or phrases that create an image in my mind, or makes me smile or frown, or where I can tell the author or narrator is making me um, agree or disagree with their perspective. So for example, here on page one, there's a great example of the style of language that the narrator uses very frequently in the story. He has a funny way of saying things that makes me smile. Instead of saying that Jim shot a deputy marshal and I fought alongside of him, well, Henry chooses to have him say, I kind of corroborated his side of the argument. This is a witty, maybe a little wordy, kind of way of saying the same thing. I can find another example of this on the same page where he finds a funny way of saying that he and his friend Jim have decided to rob a train. He says, we decided to transact a little business with the railroads. This is humorous, clever way of saying something simple. But there are different kinds of humor. Let's look at how this narrator's funny, witty way of describing things continues, but also changes. So for on the second page, for example, he continues talking in a clever, wordy way to the messenger on the express car when he tells him to open up or get perforated. Perforated meaning, or get shot. And then he uses a simile to describe how the messenger hits the ground when he jumps out of the train car. He hit the dirt like a lump of lead. So what I feel here, the emotion, is still humorous, but it's more complicated. This is an example of what we could call dark humor or sardonic humor. He's talking about something not funny in real life, such as getting killed or hurt, in a funny kind of way. Let's get a few more examples of this. On page three, he, described, he describes train passages in a way that supports his claim that the majority of men are cowards. He says, all these big, tough-looking dudes who just moments before we're talking big get so scared that their ears flop. That line not only evokes an image in my mind, furthermore makes me laugh. He's ridiculing these men. And this continues later on the same page when he mocks the Pullman conductor. And he doesn't actually mean what he's saying here. He's poking fun at the conductor's seriousness in performing his job, as well as mocking how the conductor is assuming that he, the train robber, will be intimidated by Mr. Pullman's great name. So I can get a sense from this that the narrator may also dislike authority. Here the narrator echoes his earlier mockery of the male train passengers who get so scared that their ears fly. He describes them here looking as frightened and tame as a lot of rabbits in a deep snow. This type of humor we could describe as satirical. The narrator uses his language to ridicule the male train passengers. So on page four, um, the narrator describes the man wearing the frock-tailed coat and silk hat, and he describes them in a way that is again mocking. 
It's one of those, he's one of those big, overgrown, solemn snoozers that sit on the platform at lectures and look wise. He's making fun of this man. He sees him as someone who is a pretender, who people think are wise but offers a little wisdom. And similar to his last mockery of a train passenger, this makes me think that the narrator doesn't like people who he views as high status or authority figures. Now, this attitude can be seen again when the narrator tells us that he thought making the man play his harmonica in front of everyone in his ridiculous outfit was the funniest sight he ever saw. Um, and then here, we can get an idea about his opinion of the officers of the law. He tells us that the reasons why they don't usually stop train robbers is a financial consideration. In other words, they're losing money. So for them, it's a question of mileage rather than courage. So his opinion here, his view, seems to be cynical. And he then gives us an example to support this opinion through the story of the train robbers he calls the Daltons. The Daltons surprised the deputies who had just been talking all big about the things they would do to them. But when the train robbery actually happens, it only takes the Daltons 10 minutes to capture the train and whip the escort. So this shows us that the narrator doesn't seem to think much of deputy marshals and officers. Now let's look at a final page of the story for a few more examples of where we can see the narrator giving us his opinion. He again makes a jab at the officers of the law when he says that, I never knew officers to attack abandoned outlaws unless they outnumbered them at least three to one. So again, he kind of portrays those officers as cowardly or calculating. And at the close of the story, he makes a really interesting comparison that we need to unpack a little bit. He compares the train robbing profession to one of its either collateral branches, politics or cornering the market. So collateral branches means basically just anything that branches out from something the same, such as branches on a tree or different descendants from the same family. Cornering the market is a phrase referring to when someone controls the supplies of a commodity and so can change the price to make more money. So this refers to the financial industry. So the narrator continues um, mocking those in authority or in status, in this case by comparing train robbing to careers in politics and finance. So now that we've picked out some examples of the word choices that O'Henry uses for his narrator, let's determine the tone. So again, the tone is the attitude of the writer or narrator towards his or her subject. And let's review some of our annotations so far. We've seen some witty phrases showing wit and humor, um, then we saw that wit begin to turn sardonic, and the narrator then ridiculed and mocked some of the train passengers and officers of the law. And this de demonstrated a satirical bent to his descriptions. And building on the idea of satire, he ridiculed in particular those who seemed to have some kind of status or authority in a society. So all these words demonstrate a pretty consistent pattern that establishes a tone of cynicism and sardonic humor. So what does this tone of cynicism reveal about the narrator's perspective? Well, it seems to reveal that he has a cynical view of his society. He doesn't seem to have a lot of respect for the men in his society. He seems to think that they're either cowardly or greedy. And by comparing train robbery to the fields of finance and politics, as well as from his statements about officers, I believe that he thinks his society is corrupt or unscrupulous. So now I've done some good thinking about this part of the text, and my last stop is to jot or write this thinking down. So if we're going back to our original question, and I'm going to refer back to my notes and my thinking, and to see my answer, you can pause the video to read the full answer, and then hit play to continue the video when you're finished reading. So today we've explored how O. Henry uses language to create a tone that impacts our understanding of his narrator's perspective. We use these three steps to guide us. Number one, scan and annotate the text, asking yourself what words or phrases evoke an image, emotion, or opinion. Number two, ask yourself what tone do these word choices create. Number three, ask yourself what does the tone reveal about the narrator's perspective. In this lesson, you have learned how to analyze the impact of specific word choices on meaning and tone by examining what they reveal about the narrator's perspective.